All right, so there you go. There'll be a lot more information coming through from uh, some of these states where we'll be having uh, these supplementary elections tomorrow. And then uh, we'll bring that as soon as we have uh, some of them already set up. But just to uh, also kick off on this, we've got uh, Chukuma Izala here in the studios, uh, election studios. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you for coming on this morning. Well, Thank you. We're back uh, focusing on some of these elections, but this is not going to be the very last one because you have some that are still not determined. Uh, they're in court, so up until when that is sorted, then we will proceed with this one. But uh, do you get a sense that not a lot of people actually know that elections will be going on in 18 states? I mean, on your way here, of course, if it's one local government in Lagos, you don't expect that much hype as you would be in several, if you were about five, six, seven local governments. But Ayo is not exactly happy because uh, he thinks that we shouldn't, and actually we're putting us through this. <laughs> What's your impression <laughs> of how we're proceeding with this now? I think um, we are not making much progress. Uh, some people will say we're not even making any progress at all. Wouldn't that be uh, too harsh? That's that would be too harsh. <laughs> That's why I say that we're not making much. My own view is that we're not making much progress. But I say there are people in the area that says we're not making any progress. That would be harsh on my neck. But I, I think we ought to do better. If at the end of the process you have the military, you have the police, you have all the security agencies, and we are going back to say we are doing it wrong in places or that we are conducting fresh elections in places. And I also think that um, in some of the places that INEC is conducting those elections, I mean, one wouldn't understand why there should be. Because in some of them, from the reports we have, elections have been announced in those areas. Remember that once the presiding officer announces the result of an election, it's concluded. Even if you tear the result sheets which the electoral officer has, the election is over already. Security agencies are with the results. Party agents are with the results. All you need to do is to call on those people to bring the results that they have. Now, election is disrupted if before counting, or before the, fi that is if before the final counting and announcement by presiding officer, there is a disruption. But I do not think that is the position in all the places that they are conducting these elections. And one wonders, why are we, why, why would somebody put us through all this? Why the disparity? Why do you think we're having this disparity in uh, what was and what is currently INEC is, uh, is set out to, to achieve? Uh, it's only INEC that can explain why they are having some of these uh, issues and bringing us to this level. You know, they have investigated. The report ought to be made public for us because the report is for Nigerians. And let us know, because, you know, when you look at the act, whenever INEC is to act this way, its reason must be cogent and verifiable. Look at Section 25, Section 26 of the Electoral Act. Whenever it takes such decisions that are outside the normal decision it has taken, the, result, the reason must be verifiable and cogent. So we are yet to understand why they will take us through this route. Do you think that uh, INEC has been successful in uh, educating the populace about the areas where it will have these elections, just so that the apathy, which was recorded in the previous exercise, uh, I mean, for the other states that had their results announced, if you will, to these ones that are going to go through the supplementary elections, has INEC done enough of sensitization such that we're able to have more people come out and participate according to the number of the PVCs collected in those various areas? Number one is that uh, it's not only the work of INEC to do the sensitization, but INEC seems to have abandoned that aspect of sensitization. Coming to the television channels, NTA, to announce that there will be elections, how many people are tuned to this? I mean, there is no power for people to have their televisions, and even people that use their televisions may be using it for other things. So announcing it in the radio, and uh, but INEC ought to have taken further steps. Look at the local areas where they can announce. Which other uh, channels or rather which other venues can they use to announce this? But they don't do that. Political parties also are not doing much to assist the electorates. And all other people that are supposed to do their work to assist the electorate. But then, it's not just about the electorates hearing about the dates. It's also reassuring them that one, their security is guaranteed. 
Two, that when they vote, their votes will count. If somebody knows that the vote will, I will tell you during the governorship election. People said, when you called them, I was calling them, I said, hey, you are not coming. And some people said, my votes did not count the last time. So when people feel that the votes will not count, you also have a Herculean task of convincing them to come out the third, this is asking them to come out the third time. Some of them were at the polling booths where the results were announced. And you're asking them to come out again. You think they don't have anything doing. But the thing about all of this, all politicians are usually optimistic, all of them, but we'll leave it to what plays out in the field <laughs> and wait for the results at the end of the day to do this speaking, uh, as it were. But, you know, very interesting in Benway. So uh, for those, 109,000 PVCs have been collected, uh, so he says. But uh, uh, the council votes there was 121,091. So if you've got 109, and then with this margin of victory, which is 81,554, it can switch something. So yeah. the people, they definitely will be enthusiastic about this tomorrow. Yes, certainly they will be enthusiastic. Um, but we will not really expect very high turnout. When the cardinal issues are not addressed, uh, it will be difficult to say you will have 60% turnout. What are the cardinal? No, the cardinal issues of security, the cardinal issues of... Um, Confidence in which, the which electoral spoke system, about, which, which he, spoke he also about. spoke so about. Does that don't give some level of confidence that uh, people can now come out and perhaps exceed 60%, as you mentioned, because the interest is just so uh, very high and uh, this is going to be a close race in Benway State? You know, as a matter of fact, when you have uh, this type of rerun, there are a lot of inducements on the voters. We normally know that. But then, after those inducements, to what extent would they trust the system to come out? Now, we are what, what do you mean by inducements? No, of course we know that in this type of thing, you know, just like we've been reading and we've been seeing, you know, a lot of people will be, voters may be very costly now, 20,000, 30,000 per voter, 40,000 per do voter. Do they do that? They because, that's a, they, because I know that uh, INEC is, uh, they're taking one person who was caught trying to induce voters vote buying. That's an electoral offense. Yes. So in light of that, you think people will still want to go, risk going to jail because of that? I know, but then, how many people have ever been prosecuted? No, for... I, we just mentioned this yeah, one. Yes, no, oh, yes, I, I agree. But at the end, we hear these stories. Except the, the INEC takes a serious look on it and insists on prosecuting those people. Because the, uh, the uh, po uh, police public relations officer, uh, Mr. Mba, did say yesterday on the News at 10 that about uh, 1,190... Uh, 190. Yes. 1,119, 1, rather. Yes. Uh, people have been arrested from the presidential elections to the governorship elections to yes. this time, and all of them will undergo prosecution. Yes. And he's very definitive about that. So that serves as a deterrent already uh, if it's coming from the top ranks of the Nigerian police force. So mm -hmm. people should be wary that uh, security, you go the wrong way, the law is going to come after you. Uh, but it has never happened. I'm not saying it's not going to happen now. What I am saying is it's very important that it happens, you know, and that not just taking them to court where there is conviction. No, but I think, I think last year there was a report that published that about 91 persons were convicted for electoral offenses. How so, many people had it? And you're talking of 91. Yeah. When you, are, when you should be looking at a minimum of 500. Because take, for instance, you think of Lagos, for instance. If you don't have about 6, 7, 20 convictions in Lagos and electoral offense, you've not really made Lagos feel that people can be convicted. If you get to, for instance, Rivers, and you don't have up to 100 persons convicted in Rivers, you wouldn't say that anything has happened. That is why from 1999 but, but up to is now, innocent to Rivers has been a, Rivers are, are you been predetermined a that they are, they are guilty already? No, 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 no. <laughs> Now, if we have high volume of violence, if we have high volume of rigging, if we have high volume of uh, inducement in many places, and you're telling us 91, you're telling us below 100 throughout the Federation of people convicted, and you have not shown us that you have really tried to prosecute up to 1,000 persons uh, out of this number. Well, no, you... no, the, the, the point is that when you're doing it, people are watching. The media houses are carrying it, you know, just the way they, you know, they carry other, in, other investigations and other prosecutions are that are going on. Are you saying there have been collusions? No, I am saying that the state has not been really very serious. It's not just on electoral issues. 
but the states have not been very serious in terms of looking at this issue, knowing that it's a cancer. It's a cancerous cell that is within the system. They've never seen it as serious. We see more other things as serious, just like the way we try to say we are prosecuting corrupt people. In, this in, is a major aspect of the corruption, because once you stop this, it becomes easier for the masses to enthrone the people they want. In the um, presidential election, the major issue was logistics. Yes. During the governorship election, the major issue was security. Yes. What is likely to be it this time? I think it's still both. There will be security, but the, second, the third aspect will be apathy as a result of the fact that the people do not trust the electoral umpire and the security agencies. So it's still going to be there. Now, I don't know the extent of enlightenment, like you said, that they have done in these areas. And then whether the parties, whether the political parties have trusted the security agencies and INEC well enough as to tell the people, as to guarantee that, look, what you're going to vote to will count. What do we do in this particular case? Because, you know, listening to the resident electoral commissioner there, while they raised questions about the political party saying, well, why he responded, saying, look, if a party agent has signed the results, they cannot come forward and begin to complain. But we also do know that, according to the laws, if a party agent don't sign the results sheet, it doesn't invalidate the results. So for you, do you think that uh, that is okay? No, when a party agent signs, what they are saying is there is presumption. When he signs, whether he signs or not, no, if he doesn't, doesn't sign, invalidate no, the result. No, if he doesn't sign, it doesn't invalidate the result. Yes. But if he signs... He can't are, come forward and then complain. No, he can't come forward and complain. That does not mean that if there is any other extraneous evidence that he was induced to sign. If you can lead evidence, the only thing is that there is a presumption that they think that the party has accepted it. But if the political party, as a group, maybe the chairman says my agent was induced or was not aware of one, two, three. Like some of the agents may not really know what they should sign. I'll give you an example. In places where we are observing, you will finish election where they have more than 500 packs of voting materials, you know, and the agent doesn't know that all of them should be invalidated. Many of them don't understand. Many of them will be asked sign and they will sign. But then it is for the political party to prove that he did not understand what he signed. But there is a presumption by INEC that once you have signed, the whole thing was okay. But remember that if the, if the system was not okay, for instance, if there is overvoting and the agent signs, you cannot say because you cannot sign illegality. 